Final Fantasy 16 feels like a big step in a new direction. It might not be the classic style some longtime fans had hoped for, but it's a step that's confident, exploring a new world of possibilities while carrying forward good chunks of the series' past. Final Fantasy 16 follows the journey of Clive Rossfield through three distinct eras of his life. Starting in his teens, where Clive is the shield of his younger brother and heir to the throne, Joshua, it later jumps forward to a more troubled and traumatic time for Clive, and further on as the story develops. I'm hoping to keep this review mostly spoiler-free, as there are quite a few twists and turns along the way. There are many nations, names, and proper nouns to keep track of as it goes on, so the active Time Lore feature helps a ton. Square Enix has done a surprising amount of work cataloging all the character relationships, political intrigue, and the evolving landscape of Alasthea over the course of the story. Throughout this adventure, Clive also slowly builds up a band of companions in their attempt to right the wrongs of the world. Clive starts out as a bit of a lone wolf on a quest to solve his own troubles, but very soon gets caught up in the larger issues at hand, and oh boy are there some wrongs to be righted. Final Fantasy XVI goes for a dark fantasy setting that feels very, very Game of Thrones at times. Those born with magic are seen as lesser people, and are branded as bearers. They're bought, sold, and it's spended like a commodity, as their use of magic gradually drains the life force from their body until they're spent. Square Enix tackles these dark themes head first, and how it lands can vary. Some early plot beats around bearers and their struggles hit well, while others don't. Final Fantasy XVI's highest plot points really, really hit, in the way a super-produced Final Fantasy cutscene can. Story beats and side characters usually get more fleshed out in the side quests, which contain bits of expanded lore or more time with a specific character. The combat of XVI is flat-out good. Easy comparisons can be made to other third-person character action games, ranging from God of War to Devil May Cry. But while it captures the spirit of those, it doesn't lose all of its RPG heart either. Clive can have up to three iconic forms equipped at any time, which he can swap between light stances. He can also swing his sword and fire off bolts of magic, holding either down to charge it up as well as dodge and take to the air. At any given time, there are a lot of options available. Each icon brings its own power and style to the fight. Phoenix, your first form, is a jack of all trades, but swap to Garuda and now you have stagger-inducing swipes and a pool ability to bring enemies close. On Titan, you can armor through enemy attacks for big damage and counter foes with your massive bulwark. As Clive gains the power of various icons, his moveset keeps expanding, and each one adds a distinct and interesting new way to fight. Where the RPG seeps in is how the player gets to determine their playstyle. Abilities can be upgraded and eventually mastered, which frees them up from being attached to their respective icon. So for example, if you master a Phoenix move, you can equip it to your Shiva loadout. As a result, endgame builds get really interesting, as you start to mix your icon forms and signature moves the way you want, like Phoenix's dash or Titan's counter, with the individual icon abilities you favor. A playstyle that feels like your own can start to emerge. A good chunk of the early game is spent with a handful of icons and abilities. It makes some of the early standard fair fights feel a bit repetitive, but thankfully that gets a lot better as more and more skills join Clive's arsenal. Equipment can also augment this, but aside from a few different accessories, they largely help boost your resilience, damage, and ability to stagger enemies into a state where you can really wallop on them. Final Fantasy XVI has a set of accessories called Timely Accessories, which can assist with a lot more of the action-y aspects of the game. Some are low impact, like an accessory which controls Clive's faithful companion, Torgal, for you, while others can make dodging easier or let you auto-combo. For those who enjoy action combat, I don't think you'll want or need to fall back on these, but for those who want a little help, they're a nice bit of help in getting through those trickier fights. Bosses are where Final Fantasy XVI's combat really gets to shine. Whether main story quest fights or some of the higher ranked hunts, bosses can bring a whole new set of challenges to deal with in a really engaging way. Bosses will start out slow, but gradually start throwing the kitchen sink at you. Barrages of abilities can feel like I'm playing a more action-driven Final Fantasy XIV raid encounter. These are bosses that aren't just fun to fight once, but over and over, and thankfully you can in the arcade mode. On top of that, there is a New Game Plus option that bumps up the level cap, swaps out encounters, and seems to generally expand on the entire campaign. Getting through Final Fantasy XVI once was already no small task, as I rolled the credits at about 55 hours and still had plenty of side activities left over. Even just getting words on the page about what this action RPG is feels like a huge task. Final Fantasy has entries that can feel monolithic in size and importance, standing out as these big system-driving role-playing games. Final Fantasy XVI is no exception. Where XVI succeeds for me is its confidence in what it is. It doesn't half-step into its newfound drive for action combat. 
It goes hard into its M-rated dark fantasy world, but it doesn't leave behind crystals, chocobos, or moodles. Sitzteen's overall message is one of free will and choice, and the resolution to determine your own destiny. Breaking the Chains of Fate certainly isn't new for RPGs, but it feels apt for a series trying to break new ground, and in a numbered entry at that. There are some stumbles and falters, a few places where quests drag on or story beats fall flat. At certain points, I started breezing through or running by overworld battles, and there were certainly characters I wish I had seen a bit more time to flourish. Final Fantasy XVI takes a confident step into new territory and doesn't slip. And for those who want an impressive, electrifying, enjoyable action RPG to sink hours upon hours into, you'd be very hard-pressed to find a better option than Final Fantasy XVI. Thanks for watching our video review for Final Fantasy XVI. You can find Eret's full extended thoughts on the game in our written review over at Destructoid.com, which will be linked in the description down below. And if you've made it this far, please consider giving the video a like and even subscribing for more.